Uh, good morning. Uh, here we are again in the Shiloh Sunday School class at Temple Baptist Church. And, and we have come to the end of the book of Ecclesiastes. Here, here we are the, the last Sunday of the month. And, and uh, it's been a good Bible study. I have enjoyed it for the most part. It's, uh, it, you know, it's, it's, some of it ouches us, but it's supposed to. And so we, we take all that with a grain of salt. We realize that, that Solomon is, is, a, is an old man and he's coming to the end of his days and he's got some things he wants to say. And you know, when we consider that, we, we should think about uh, what would we say to those that we loved if we knew that we had 25 minutes to say all that we uh, wanted to say to them. Solomon has done this these 12 chapters here and realizing that his life is about over. A lot of his life has been real good and a lot of his life has been really bad. And uh, he knows that he's going in a very short time to go to meet his creator. And so he's, he has said... Actually, we talked about last week that he said in... in uh, I'm going to flip back over there just for a minute. He said in chapter 9, verse 1, he said, For this I considered in my heart, even to declare all this, that the righteous and the wise and their works are in the hand of God. The, the, he's gearing down there, and he's, he's, he's wanting people to know that this world is not a world that uh, is a haphazard world. It's a world that is organized and, and it's disciplined and it's God's world and he, he is the one that, that watches and controls that. So now, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 12 here, we're going we're gonna to look at, if we have the time, we're going to look at about, oh, I don't know, a few verses in this uh, down through verse 14. We're going to make it through one way or the other. But he, t he says right in the very beginning, he says, remember... Now, that's, that is a, a tie of the end of, of chapter 11. And so we need to go back up there a little bit into verse 9. It says, There rejoice, O man, in thy youth, O young man, in thy youth. And let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. And then he sells, says something that is really profound that is worth our time to pay attention to and spend a few minutes on it because he says, but know thou, but know thou that, all, that for all these things, what things? These things he's, that this young man is doing. He says, rejoice or be happy, young man, in thy youth or while you are young. Let your heart cheer thee in the days of the youth and walk in the days of thine heart and in the sight of thine eyes. Do what you want to do, but know thou that all these things God will bring thee into judgment, that there is a payday for these things. And you should know that while you're living. Yes, yeah, some people say so in these wild oats. Uh, while you're living life large and you are young and, and nothing hurts and, and you can go on and do, you have the ability, the physical, mental ability to handle these things. But remember, he says, but know thou that for all these things that you do, whether good or bad, you're going to answer for them one of these days. And he, he feels like, as King Solomon, that he needs to Declare these things. Well, well, that was the word he used back over in chapter 9. That I need, I have a responsibility to share and to tell you these things. And so he says, now remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. The, when, when everything else is all said and done, remember the, the sovereign God. Remember the one that created you the one that has set you up and breathed life into your, into your nostrils and set you up to walk on this earth. And he says, Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth 
while the evil days come not. And that evil days, is, is he's talking about old age there. He just really is that, that there's, we're going to talk about some of those things here in a few minutes, but, but uh, there, is a, uh, there is a, what's the word I want to use? There, there is a word there of uh, encouragement, exhortation, that he says that remember God and walk in his path of wisdom and enjoy the blessings such a life contains. But know thou, and then he says, fear God and keep his commandments. Keep God the forefront in your life. Uh, I, cannot, uh, I cannot say I've always done that because I, I was not saved till I was 33 years old and I was on that other side of the, the fence for a long time. But now it's, it's been close to 40 years or a little more now since I was saved. And so uh, I tried to live that part knowing those past sins are forgiven and put away as far as the east is from the west, the scriptures say. But now uh, there, there's a time that life is going to, it's getting tougher. And I realize that physically, I, I notice that it does and, and different things. And so we'll talk about that a little bit as we move along there. Uh, he, he says there, uh, the ev evil days come not, nor the day, nor the years grow nigh. You, you don't realize when you're young how short life is. You, uh, uh, you know, you're just going to live forever. Nothing bad's ever going to happen. And you have this mindset in the back of your head that everything is just going to click, 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 click right down the road. And pretty soon something falls in the middle and messes that, that thought up. And, and he says, but... And again, in verse 1, he said, Remember now thy Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. There's a time coming in, in all of our lives that we're going to ache and we're going to hurt and we're going to have pains. I, I think early, 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 early this morning, uh, I woke. what woke me up this morning about 4.30 was my left knee was just throbbing and it's just a toss up whether it's the left or the right knee on any given day but that's kind of you know is is this the uh the good old days that you know what is what was the good old days was that when that didn't happen uh it, it could have been had something to do with that but these these this phrase here this the evil days refers to the inevitable physical and mental deterioration that comes with aging and that these these when you look up that word that evil days it's just talking about the days of misery I'm I'm thinking the Lord I'm not there yet but yet there there are aches and pains and and so anyway uh, in verses two through five he he reiterates some of these things and he uses these analogies and metaphors that is just full of it in these verses and may we may run through them pretty quick and and look at at some things because in verse 2 he says while the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened nor the clouds return after the rain and and you know it's a it's a time when when you look at life you look ahead at life and you see that there's Life's not always going to be without pain. It's not always going to be without uh, everything rosy and, and that we can look at. And you see these things and you see these storm clouds running or coming and they're coming across the horizon. They're getting closer and closer and closer and you can't do anything about it. You know, there, there's no way to run. There's no way to hide from these types of things. It, it's just natural that, that they are going to happen and and, you know, we, we are not going to enjoy these things because Solomon called them the evil days, the day, days of, of misery that are coming. And, and you know, that I, I don't want to depress you too much or run up too much time on that. But he says there in verse 3, in the, days, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble. And that's talking about the, the legs getting weak and that the hands developing tremors. I have uh, uh, what what is called essential tremors in, in my left hand, and I am left-handed, 
that's kind of had carpal tunnel surgery on both my hands and and uh, anyway if if we go somewhere and there's any signing in to be done Isaiah usually does it because you can't really read my chicken scratching most of the time because of that I can be trying to write something and and sometimes it just poop and it's it's messed up and so I I don't do that so I I recognize that time that 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 you get that that tremble in there and it says and strong men shall bow themselves and and talking about the the legs getting weak and and uh, weaker and where you just cannot do what you what you used to do what you wanted to do and those times are coming to all of us he he goes on there and he says and the grinders cease because there are few and those that look out the windows be darkened and that's that's talking about the grinders is talking about your teeth and they're beginning to fall out. And I've, I'm blessed to still have all my teeth except one. And and uh, I take really good care of them because I really want to keep them. But yet we we uh, we know that that there there's those times come. And especially in the day that this was written where they did not have dental care and things like we do today. Uh, it says the grinders cease because there are few and those that look out the windows be darkened. And, and he's talking about the, how the eyesight gets worse and worse. You can see the, the, the eyeglasses that I wear and without them, I, I see the wall and I might see uh, a little bit, but if I take them off, I couldn't tell you, many of you apart other than I know where you sit. And so, you know, these, these things are coming and they happen and, and it says, and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. Uh, it says, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. That's another thing that comes with getting old. I kind of thought when I retired back about 11 years ago, I thought maybe I might sleep in a little bit. Every year that goes by, I'm, I'm awake earlier. I recognize that. 4.30, sometime between 4.30 and 5.30, I'm just awake, and you know I'm the not a whole lot to do that time of the morning, but I, I I just do, and and I see that I hear that from from other people that I know that they have those same types of of things that they go through, and it's just a, a change of of biology in in your life and, and what you, what you go through, and he but then he says and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. And all the daughters of the music shall be brought low, or that you get up early because the sound of the birds. Remember, they didn't have really good uh, storm windows and all that kind of thing like we had today. And their houses and places where they lived were open, and so the the sound of the birds would wake them up, and real early in the morning. But then it gets to the place where you can't hear that anymore because you're you're. Uh, I have scars on my eardrums from from back in Vietnam and, and those things, those eardrums get, as you get older, they get stiff and they don't work like they should. So if you say something to me and I don't act like I heard you, well, try me again. It's not that I'm ignoring you. But th that's just what that's like. And and he says, and, and, and when they shall be afraid of that which is, which is high, uh, a six foot step ladder is high enough for me anymore. Uh, work construction and and I I have been in in my life where I've I've worked in multi story buildings and and most of that's not bothered me and used to I could walk I beams and all that and not pay any attention to it but those days are gone. Uh, there's a pretty good story behind why they're gone but yet. It still yet it's uh, it's just not something that I want to do. I don't like to be on unstable ground uh, because of the consequences of what might happen or could happen if if I would fall, and uh, I really do not want to end up breaking a hip or something like that over something silly uh, that's not necessary. So anyway, you know it uh, it says and when they shall be afraid of that which is high. And fear shall be in the way. Those consequences to when you get older and those bones break easier and those types of things are, are just, you know, I don't want to go there. And I don't think you do either. Uh, we know we have people in our own church that, 
that uh, some that used to be here in this classroom, and they don't come anymore because of that fear. And that's understandable. Uh, the, the scriptures tell us that we can understand those things. He said, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. The, uh, the talking about the almond tree or losing, losing those blooms, I think about in, in here in southeast Missouri where we live, we, in the spring of the year, uh, it's kind of a same analogy of the wild cherry trees and, and in the, the dogwood trees and, and the Bradford pears, we see a lot of those knowing that there's a time there when they're, their blooms are white and they're pretty and they're young and everything's going to go, but that's going to change. And that's what it's talking about there. And it's kind of like mine. My hair went from gray to no hair. And so that's, that's you know, we, we live with that sometimes. Uh, most of us, especially men, do that. Uh, but, but it happens, and that's the analogy that is there. He said, the, the grasshopper shall be a burden and desire shall fail. Uh, we had a, a lady back years ago where we used to go to church and she had a stroke, and she, uh, at the end of that stroke, when that was all said and done, uh, she got her health back, but she lost her ability to taste, and so she did not want to eat anything. And the last time I saw her before she passed away, she probably didn't weigh maybe 80, 85 pounds, but she just did not want to eat. Her desire to eat had, uh, it just went away. Uh, I and I think of my own mother before she passed away. She kind of was the same way. She had lost down to to just just hardly nothing, and she would not eat anything. And and so that was a, a you know that that was a part of the process of, of dying. And and uh, so anyway, he he goes on there, and uh, there's there's a, a sheet I kind of wanted to show you, and Brother Lindell's going to bring it up on the screen. And I'm going to talk while you while you look at that through through a couple of verses. And uh, anyhow, in verse six, there it says, "Well, to go back in verse five, it says, it says, and desire shall fail because man goes to his long home.' He's talking about the other side after death, and the mourners go about in the streets, and and this this works there. And then he get, begins in verse six. And he says, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or, or the, the time, and the, the analogy there is that, or the golden bowl be broken. And it's talking about a, 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 go, a silver thread that is hanging, and there's a golden bowl on the bottom of it. And it's, talk, and it's the analogy of life and the lifespan being in that silver thread that is hanging there. And it says then, and ever, or ever the silver cord be loosed, or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher, and then another analogy, a, a pitcher, like a water pitcher, or a dipper being broken at the fountain, or at the well, or the wheel broken at the cistern. And in that, you know, in that time, if, if you couldn't get water, you were going to die. Well, it's that way today for all of us. But then, and what I wanted you to see there on the screen in verse 7, it says, Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. That, that, that is a reference back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. I think that's probably up on your screen. There's a time from way back in, in England, back in the old, old days uh, of the church there, where there's, there's a thing called a, a book of common prayer and it was a book that had prayers for different circumstances, like prayers for weddings and things like that. And that, that was taken, this prayer for the committal service, that's what it was. It said, earth to earth and ashes to ashes, dust to dust, it is certain and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. And, and that is, uh, it says, as we... we bring this body for burial, and then it goes on and say that. And then that's based on these verses here, and, and then on Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. And so we said that, and, and having said that, we're going to have to move on, because 
we want to uh, be able to finish this chapter up. And there, there are some things that we need to see at the very end of this. In verse 8, Solomon said, Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. And the mindset is, you know, we're, we live when we're young. Hopefully we'll remember our Creator in those days. We'll live righteous lives. But then when it's all said and done, in verse 8 he says, Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. All is a vapor. You know, it's here for a while. Then it's gone. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's just life. And I, I think that's... that's uh, I don't know if I agreed with that. I don't want to disagree with what the Scriptures say. But I think to say that life is meaningless... I, 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 you know, I, I, in the short term, I just cannot see that. I know that in the long term, yeah, it probably is. I think about my family, my extended family. Uh, from my dad's side of the family, down in uh, Neshoba County, Mississippi, there is a place down there. My dad's name was Cook Fortenberry, and in that time, it's not was not such a strange thing, but that was his mother's maiden name, Cook was, and uh, anyway, there there's a uh, it's it's called Cook's Chapel. It's a Methodist church down there, and my great 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 grandfather gave the land for that church. He's buried in that cemetery. Uh, my great great grandfather's buried there. His sons and his sons and his sons are buried all buried in that cemetery. My grandmother and grandfather are buried in that cemetery. They're still having church there today. And when I think about things like that, the things that we do for the Lord are not always just here today and gone tomorrow. Uh, someday, to go along with what the Scripture says, that church will be gone. Uh, all memory of those people that are buried there, my family that are there, their, uh, their memories of them as individuals are gone except maybe a little bit in history books here and there. And so, uh, you know, there's a sense there where, yes, in one sense that's so, and in another sense it's not. So anyway, it says, Moreover, because the preacher was wise, he taught the people knowledge. Yes, he gave good notice or gave good advice and sought out to set in order many proverbs I'm going to go down here because I'm out of time. We're going to be in about two minutes. And I want to, I want to hear, I want to tell you, show you these last two verses because just as chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 was one bookend, verses 13 and 14 are the other bookends with all this good advice and, and good uh, proverbs and all this in between. He says, let us... When this is all said and done, he said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. When life is all said and done and we've come to the end of it, fear God and keep His commandments. And then it says, this is the whole duty of man. And in the, if, you, if you're looking in, especially a King James Bible, you see that word duty there. Is, uh, it's in italics. That shows that it was not there in the Hebrew in the original text, but it says, Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole of man. This is our whole makeup. This is why we were created in the beginning. This is the thing that our whole mind, body, and soul is created that we might bring glory to God. That that is our, our reason for being here. The whole a whole of our makeup, mind, body, and soul is there that we might fear God, that we might live in reverence and awe of a holy God. And, and so he said, then he has this last admonition at the very end. And he says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There's a payday and there, there is a time for that. There's two judgments that, that we are going to face. And for the saved, for the Christian, it's the Bema judgment, the, the one it talks about in 2 Corinthians, that where we'll be judged for our, our works, our good works and things that we've done. And then there's another one called the Great White Throne Judgment. 
and that is where the lost will be. It, it's not that if they die lost, it's already decided what's going to happen. This is just the announcement to them, and, and that's where it will be. It's called the Great White Throne Judgment. It talks about that in the book of Matthew. Uh, so anyway, I hope you all have enjoyed this. Uh, we, are, we will be, uh, the following week, we'll be in the book of uh, uh, Philippians. It's a good book. That's going to be a good Bible study. And so I want to encourage you to come and be here and uh, take part in that. But anyway, I appreciate you listening. Thanks a lot and have a good day.